Hello everyone and welcome to the fifth video of the Angular Portfolio website course. This is the part of the course where I think it gets more fun because we're going to start building the UI of our website. Specifically, we are going to build the header. Looking at the finished version, the header will be this section here that contains the name, title, and some social links. Let's go back to our project. The first step is to create a component for our header. We went over what components are in Angular in a previous video. However, at the time, I was using the app root component, which isn't the clearest example of how components work. After we create the header, we will have a better example of an Angular component. To create a new component in Angular, we will need to use the Angular CLI. Go ahead and create a new terminal session. Before we start, make sure you are in your project folder. Then we'll type ng g c. The g is short for generate and the c is short for component. What we could do instead is type out ng generate component. However, that becomes tedious to type after a while, so we can keep it shortened to ng g c instead. The next thing we will type is the name of the component, which in our case is header, so let's add that as well. The last thing we will type is skip test. This last part is a flag that tells Angular to not include a test file with the generation of the component. By default, Angular will include a test file that would be used to test the component. We are opting out of the test file because it's not really needed for what we're doing. Most of the components we will be generating will contain static data that doesn't change. Because of this, the test file will be out of scope for this course. Let's go ahead and press enter. Let's take a look at what's been added. Three files were created for our header component within a header folder. Components will be generated within the app folder by default. If we expand this folder, we will see the three files that have been created. We have the CSS style sheet, which we can use to store any custom styling for this component. We have the HTML file, which is where we will write the HTML template for this component. And lastly, we have the TypeScript file for our component, which defines the component itself and will contain any variables and functionality that we want for our component. The at module file has been modified as well, so let's take a look at that. An import has been added for our new component. The header component has also been added to the declarations array as well. Let's go back to the HTML template for our header. By default, components will be generated with a paragraph tag saying that this component works. Now, let's go and take a look at our site to see if we can see the header component. Go ahead and run the project if it's not running already. If we take a look at our site, we don't see our new component yet. This is because we still need to add it within our app root component. Let's go back to our project. And let's go to the app component HTML file. The app root component is what contains all of the components of our entire website. This means that any components that we want to display will need to be included somewhere in here. Let's remove the h1 tag and replace it with our header by typing app-header. Now let's go back to our site. We're now seeing the HTML for our header component, which as of now just contains this header works text. Let's go back to our project. We can start designing the layout of our header. We can go ahead and delete this paragraph tag. Next, let's create a div tag. It's at this point that we can start taking advantage of the CSS that Bootstrap provides for us. A fun fact about this course is when I first wrote the code for it, I was using Bootstrap 4, which contained a component called Jumbotron, which gave us that large banner look for our header. 
However, the latest versions of NGX Bootstrap will install Bootstrap 5, which is a version we will be using, and Bootstrap 5 did away with the Jumbotron component. With that being said, I still like the look of the Jumbotron component, so we're going to recreate it for our header. To do this, let's go to our CSS file for our header component. In here, we're going to recreate the Jumbotron class by typing dot Jumbotron. We're going to give this class the property padding, which we will set to 2rem space 1rem. We will also add a background color. We are going to set this to hashtag E9ECEF. Now let's go back to our HTML template and set the class of our div to Jumbotron. Next, let's create an inner div. Let's give this div the class text-center. Inside of our nested div, we're going to add our name and title. For our name, let's add an h1 tag. I'm going to add the name John Doe inside this tag. Let's also give the h1 tag the class display-4. Next, let's add an h3 tag and give it the text software engineer. Let's stop for a moment and see what this looks like on our site. If everything was done correctly, then what you should see is our header that looks much better than what was there a few minutes ago. Also, at this point I'll mention, a lot of the content on this site is generic and mostly will consist of placeholder text. Like the name and title, for example, I would encourage you to make it your own by using your name and title or occupation. Of course, if you want to follow along with what I'm using, that's perfectly fine as well. If we take a look at the finished website, we do have social links in the header. We're going to hold off on adding those for now, and we'll come back to it when we build out the contact section of the website. And that will be all for this video. In the next video, we will start working on adding a nav bar to our site. Feel free to click on the middle of the screen to continue along to that video now. Thanks for watching.